Hi guys, welcome to Android Guider. So you would have uh, definitely heard that the Pixel 2 is the best camera phone out there in the market. And uh, what uh, makes that camera so great is its software processing. I say that because uh, there are a couple of other phones out there in the market which uh, use the same camera sensor as the Pixel 2. And uh, that is the Sony IMX362 if you want to know that. And uh, when you look at the difference in the photographs of those taken with the Pixel 2 and uh, those of the other uh, phones, there is a huge difference. And and uh, so clearly, uh, I mean, uh, the underlying hardware that is the camera sensor is uh, the same in those other phones and the Pixel 2. But uh, there is a difference in the images because there is a difference in the software processing. Google calls its uh, software processing for the cameras as uh, HDR+. And uh, that is what uh, makes uh, the photos taken with the Pixel 2 so great. So in this video, we will be taking a look at uh, how Google uh, came up with the HDR+. To begin with, I will be first be covering the limitations that we have uh, in that uh, that are there in the cameras of our phones. Uh, then I will uh, touch upon a few technical terms, and uh, in the end, I will uh, tell you how Google overcame all those uh, limitations of uh, the cameras in our phones just using software. So. The first limitation is that uh, the camera sensor and the lens that we have in our uh, phones that is really very small. This is the camera lens that we have in a phone. So you can make out your, for yourself that uh, the camera lens is uh, really very small. So when you take a look at a standalone camera, you can just see how big the camera lens is. After the camera lens, we have the camera sensor. And uh, uh, from the thickness of uh, this camera, you can uh, just make out that uh, the camera sensor must be really very thick and uh, our phones I mean you know our phones are already very thin and uh, the camera is uh, just one of the many components in, in our phones so you can really imagine that uh, the camera in our phones uh, the camera sensor in our phones must be really very small and uh, unlike some other places where uh, the size is debatable the size definitely matters here. there is no doubt about that uh, that is because uh, the light will first enter through the camera lens it will then uh, go on to the camera sensor so the larger the camera lens is the more light it can take in and the larger the camera sensor is the more light it can receive so uh, you must know that uh, the photographs that we take they are just uh, digital reproductions of uh, the light that is uh, captured by the camera so the more light uh, that is captured the better our photographs will be so one of the reasons why the photographs taken with the professional cameras or standalone cameras are so great are because uh, the camera sensor and the uh, lens is uh, really very large as compared to those in our smartphones now you would uh, know that when a camera has to take a photograph its uh, shutters open for a small amount of time let the light in and uh, then they close and uh, the speed at which uh, the shutters open and close that is uh, known as the shutter speed so if we use a slow shutter speed on the cameras in our smartphones then the camera sensor will be exposed to the light for a longer duration of time and uh, we call that uh, duration for which uh, the camera sensor can absorb light we call that as exposure time and uh, exposure time and uh, shutter speed are basically the one and the same thing because uh, uh, for the time the shutters are open only for you know it's only then that the camera sensor can absorb light so exposure time and uh, shutter speed are uh, the same thing so uh, if we use a slow shutter speed on our phones then uh, the camera will be able to absorb some more light than usual and uh, the photos should be better as a result however uh, that's not the case and uh, that is because uh, there are a couple of uh, disadvantages of uh, using a slow shutter speed uh, one is that uh, if you have to take a photograph like uh, this or of uh, that of a baby smiling then uh, slow shutter speed is obviously not useful because uh, till the time uh, the shutters open and close that uh, moment would be gone and uh, another thing is that uh, we can't uh, hold our uh, hands still for uh, a very long amount of time for you know even we can't hold our uh, hands still for even a couple of seconds so uh, uh, if our hands shake in the middle of uh, taking a photograph then that uh, photograph can turn out to be blurry so uh, slow shutter speed is uh, only useful for those scenes where there is uh, almost no movement However, since uh, most of the photographs that we take have uh, some sort of movement in them, that is why the slow shutter speeds are not the default shutter speeds. And uh, there are a couple of smartphone manufacturers such as uh, Nokia and Motorola that uh, have a manual mode in the camera applications inside their phones. And uh, in that 
manual mode, you will be able to find an application for changing the shutter speed. So if you want to make use of a slow shutter speed, um, and a slow shutter speed is particularly useful if you are taking a photograph in a low light uh, scene, then uh, slow shutter speeds can be really useful. Then. So Nokia and uh, Motorola and a couple of other companies, they offer a manual mode. So if you want to change the shutter speed, then uh, you can open up the uh, manual mode and do that. But uh, Google's uh, Nexus and Pixel phones don't have a slow shutter speed because they don't need that. Uh, there is uh, no full-fledged uh, manual mode inside uh, the camera applications in Pixel and Nexus phones. And uh, they don't even need that because uh, HDR Plus is so great. Talking about uh, HDR Plus, let's uh, remove that uh, plus part for a moment and uh, talk about HDR. Now HDR stands for high dynamic range. Uh, that might be a mouthful for you, so let's uh, break it down. Uh, now you know what a range is. Uh, there is a minimum value, a maximum value and uh, then there are all those values in between. Uh, so a dynamic range, a, dyna a dynamic range uh, refers to the color values in photographs. White is the brightest color, black is the darkest color. So a dynamic range in, a, in an image refers to the refers to the range of color values ranging from the darkest one to the brightest one now the dynamic range of our eyes is way more than that of any camera instrument that is our eyes can absorb more color so to make the images taken with the standard camera appear more true to life we make use of uh, several techniques in which we enhance the dynamic range of the captured images that is we boost those colors and uh, these techniques are uh, known as uh, HDR imaging or high dynamic range to achieve HDR images most of the phones and uh, this doesn't include the pixel or the nexus uh, so most of the phones take uh, three images at uh, different shutter speeds the basic idea behind uh, using different shutter speeds is that uh, the dark areas in a scene will be better visible in the photograph taken with a slow shutter speed and uh, the brighter areas will be uh, better visible in uh, an image taken with a high shutter speed However, when the shutter speed is low, more light is uh, captured from those uh, bright areas and uh, that causes them to blow out in the image. That is, uh, those areas turn white. Take a look at uh, this example of HDR. Four images were taken. In the first image, the shutter speed is the highest. And uh, as you can see, only the brightest details were captured from the scene and uh, the rest of the image is black. The shutter speed is decreased in the second image and we have more information in the image as a result of more light captured by the camera. In the third and the fourth image, we see that the highlights are blown out, but more detail is preserved from the dark areas. So, uh, different parts of the scene are uh, sharp in uh, different images and, uh, in, uh, and the final HDR image is uh, obtained by fusing together all those individual images and uh, this is the result of our example. So as you can see, the HDR image is uh, sharper than uh, all the individual images and uh, this is what uh, the scene might have uh, looked like if we had been there in person to see it through our eyes. Now, HDR might uh, seem great and all, but uh, there are a couple of problems. One, uh, it uh, takes time for the camera to capture three images and then uh, put all of them together. And uh, two, when uh, we are uh, using a slow shutter speed, our uh, hands are bound to shake. And uh, I've also mentioned uh, the fact that uh, slow shutter speeds aren't uh, useful for scenes with movement. So these are uh, two problems that uh, we have with HDR images. And uh, that is why in uh, some cases, the HDR image might not turn out to be as great as expected. This is an HDR image taken with the iPhone 6 and uh, as you can see, the shadows and highlights are greatly represented but uh, the merging of images from a fast moving cause swing led to a ghost effect. So we have uh, seen what HDR images are and uh, what all problems that they have. Now let's take a look at how Google has tackled those problems. The major problem with HDR images is that of the ghost effect. And uh, this effect, as we have already discussed, is caused by movement being there in the scene and uh, the HDR image being clicked there. To eliminate this effect, Google minimizes the time it takes to capture an HDR image. And it uh, does that by capturing all the multiple images that are required for the HDR mode. Uh, all those images are taken with a high shutter speed. So so because all those images are captured so quickly, even if there is uh, some movement in the scene, that movement is eliminated because the images are taken so quickly. The multiple images are captured almost instantly. So uh, this makes uh, HDR plus way quicker than the standard HDR mode. And uh, as a result, the ghost effect is minimal in HDR plus. 
Now you might be thinking about uh, low light scenes and uh, that's natural because a uh, high shutter speed image can't capture much light. So that uh, raises the question, how does HDR plus mode deal with scenes with less light? Well, uh, unlike the standard HDR mode, which takes uh, three images with uh, different shutter speeds, Google's HDR plus mode takes up to 10 images. All of them are, and all of them, as I've already told you, are taken with high shutter speeds. I will uh, touch upon image capturing later on so that will clear uh, if you so that will clear things up if you have got any residual doubts yeah so getting back all the images that are captured are then combined using software algorithms to result into a final image and since there are a lot of images to combine the final image is sharper than each of the individual images now the best thing about uh, SDR Plus is its software algorithms. Google has uh, trained those algorithms really well to mark out uh, shadows and highlights in a scene. So once uh, the software algorithms uh, render a final image from those uh, multiple images, the software then uh, marks out uh, the shadows and highlights in that image and uh, the colors in uh, those regions are then boosted to make the final HDR Plus image look more likable and uh, more true to life. And we have uh, already talked about uh, the techniques that are used in HDR imaging to enhance the dynamic range and uh, the color enhancement that uh, Google's algorithms are uh, doing here that is pretty much the same thing. The only difference here is that uh, Google's algorithms are just way better at uh, identifying the soft uh, at identifying the shadows and highlights and they know by how much should the color be boosted in those uh, regions. The other problem with the HDR mode is that it takes a couple of seconds to generate the final HDR image after the shutter button is clicked. And we call this time taken as the shutter lag. In the Pixel 2, there is a zero shutter lag. That is the HDR plus image is generated instantly after the shutter button is tapped on. Uh, Google makes use of uh, the hexagon DSP on the Snapdragon 835 and the Pixel Visual Core to accelerate the image processing time. And uh, these are pretty powerful pieces of hardware. Uh, that's why there is no shutter lag on the Pixel 2. It's not only the powerful processing that is responsible for the zero shutter lag. The Pixel 2's camera keeps taking pictures in the background and uh, when the shutter button is clicked, HDR Plus uses a few images that were taken before the button was pressed and the image that was clicked when the shutter button was tapped on. That way, the time taken to capture multiple images is also eliminated. So that uh, pretty much uh, does it guys for this video. So I hope you guys got an idea on uh, how Google came up with HDR Plus and uh, why it uh, makes the Pixel 2's camera so great. So in case you like this video, do give this video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Take care. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.